In this video, we're going to go through an example of calculating chemical kinetics when we have more than one reactant. So in the previous video, I kind of went through the framework of how you can set up these pseudo reaction rate laws in order to use the same frameworks that we've talked about for all of these reaction orders uh, for these situations where you have more than one reactant, right? So let's look at an actual example. So let's, let's say the example where you have a coworker and you've developed a molecule that has shown potential as a cobra antivenom, which we'll call the antivenom AV. This antivenom works by binding to the venom V, rendering it non-toxic. This reaction is described by the following rate law. So you have the rate, the rate constant, and you have the concentration of the antivenom times the concentration of the venom. So in this instance, we will say that this reaction is first order with respect to the antivenom and first order with respect to the venom, right? So it says you've been given the following data from your coworker regarding the initial concentration. So for the venom, you've got an initial concentration of 0.2. And for the antivenom, you've got an initial concentration of 1 times 10 to the negative 4 molar. It says that a plot of the natural log of the antivenom versus time gives a straight line with a slope of negative 0.32 uh, per second. What is the value of the rate constant for this reaction? Right. So what we want to do is cal uh, calculate the rate constant. Now, keep in mind. We're, we're asked to solve for the rate constant, not the pseudo rate constant. So we're going to have to go through the pseudo rate constant kind of as a conduit to get to the final answer. But uh, we will have to actually calculate the rate constant, not just the pseudo rate constant in this case. OK, so straight off the bat, you see here that the venom is much more concentrated than the antivenom, right? We see that the con initial concentration of the venom is much, much more concentrated than the concentration of the antivenom, right? So that means we'll be able to make the assumption, right? Since this venom is the concentration of the venom is much, much greater than the antivenom. We're making the assumption here that the concentration of the venom is roughly equal to its initial concentration, basically saying that since it's so concentrated, it's not going to budge much off that 0.2 molar number after all the antivenom has been completely, um, you know, nullified, right? So, um, okay, so basically we're going to use that approximation in order to set up our pseudo rate expression. So let's do it. We know that from the problem, it told us that this was the rate equation. So we got K concentration AV times the concentration of V, right? But we know that V is going to be constant throughout this reaction, right? We're assuming that V is going to be roughly constant throughout this reaction. So we can rewrite this as our pseudo rate constant times the concentration of the antivenom, right? That's going to be our rate, right? So now it says that when we plotted the natural log of the antivenom versus time, it gave us a straight line with a slope of negative 0.32 seconds. That is going to be your pseudo rate constant, right? Because you're looking at the uh, the uh, the dependence of the reaction rate on just the antivenom, right? That's going to be your pseudo rate constant. So, um, so we'll get the pseudo rate constant from the slope. So the slope gives us the pseudo rate constant, right? Because it's going to be pseudo first order with respect to the antivenom, right? This will be a pseudo first order reaction with respect to the antivenom. So in this case, K prime is going to be equal to the negative of the slope, just like you would for a regular um, first order reaction. And so K prime is going to give us 0 0.32 per second, right? That's going to be our pseudo rate constant, right? Now, this is not our rate constant. This is the pseudo rate constant. So uh, keep in mind, it's this, this reaction is going to be overall, it'll be second order overall. Right. So since it's second order overall, we wouldn't expect these units for our um, overall rate constant for the reaction. Right. So uh, so in this case, uh, all we have to do in order to get the pseudo rate con to get the real rate constant from the pseudo rate constant is uh, is just use the initial concentration of our venom. Right. So we know that our pseudo rate constant is going to be equal to K times the initial concentration of the venom 
right? So K is just going to be the pseudo rate constant divided by that initial concentration of the venom. So we'll plug in our numbers here. We got 0 0.32 per second up top over 0 0.20 molar. So when you plug everything in, you get a final answer of 1.6 liters per mole per second. And that gives you your final rate constant, right? So keep in mind, right? It might be tempting when you see this number to just think, oh, I don't need to use the rest of this information. They already give me the rate constant. Wrong, right? This is a case with more than one reactant. So this is, they're giving you the slope that implies the pseudo uh, rate constant, right? From there, you have to back out the real rate constant, right? And, and I would say, make sure in order to keep this in the front of your mind, always think about what the overall order of the reaction is, right? The overall order of this reaction is second order. So you would not expect these units for a rate constant that is for a second order reaction. These are the units for a rate constant for a second order reaction, right? So you wanna make sure that you're always thinking about the overall reaction order that will allow you to be able to spot when you need to, to do this, right? Let alone the fact that it's more than one reactant, but also kind of spotting out the units and the discrepancy in units uh, whenever these problems kind of come up. Okay, so that's using, that. hopefully that gives you some good insight in how to apply this uh, this concept of using more than one reactant in chemical kinetics.